Okay, hi. Today, I would like to present my research. Okay, that focus on navigating post-pandemic challenges, the influence of governance pillar score on firm performance. So, overall, when we refer to the specific research, for this research and this study, actually examine how these governance pillars will impact the company performance, uh, where we actually use the return on asset okay, as a proxy for the firm performance. So, return on asset will become a proxy of firm performance okay, evaluated um, in this research. But this one, we specifically focus on post-pandemic, which is after COVID-19 pandemic. So, this study utilized the governance pillar score from Refinitiv Data Stream to analyze how the governance practices affect finance, financial results uh, during the period of recovery and the transition using the data of 2022 and also 2020-2023. Okay. Overall, uh, for our study, the key finding is actually governance pillar score significantly positive. Uh, okay, significantly uh, positively impact the firm performance in the post-pandemic period. Okay. So as introduction, actually there have been many prior studies that focus on firm performance relating to uh, characteristic of governance such as independent directors, audit committee composition that focus on the monitoring, the effectiveness of the board, uh, the ownership concentration as well by the family founding firms and also the external auditors, which is considered as a normal uh, corporate governance mechanism. Okay. But in this study, when we actually assess the corporate governance, we straightforward use the corporate governance pillar scores which is calculated by the Refinitiv data stream and that governance score and also mechanisms already take into consideration all the important elements okay, in the corporate, corporate governance. So now we want to see okay, what is the impact of this corporate governance pillar score towards the profitability after the post-pandemic. Okay? Uh, in the previous re research, we can see that limitation and the gap Okay, in this study address, uh, especially during post-pandemic. Uh, so since this uh, research take into consideration the recent data, the latest one in year 2023, so we can see what is actually the impact on the uh, profitability of uh, financial performance of the company, whether it is improved or not, okay, if compared uh, to the, to the uh, implication, uh, application of the corporate, corporate governance. Okay. And an overview of governance reform in Malaysia that impacting uh, the, the corporate governance. So basically, when we are talking about the reform of Malaysian Code on Corporate Governance, we do have Malaysian Code on Corporate Governance. So if you are talking about reform, so we do have a reform okay, in uh, MCCG starting from year 2001, in year 2007, in year 2012, okay, 2017, and also the recent one in year 2021. Okay. So, this research also taking into consideration the, the, the effect of corporate governance uh, after the major revision in year 2021 as well. Okay. Um, and if you refer to the specific research, okay, uh, with an emphasis of accountability and also transparency, uh, the purpose of this revision is actually to stabilize the investment and also increase the investor's confidence. And we can see that uh, the current element that they take into consideration as well is the, the environmental, social, and also governance, ESG factors, eh? inclusion into the corporate strategies to signify, signify the dedication to sustain, sustainable practices, uh, which is considered as a very critical element for continuing success of organization and the reduction of associated risk. And furthermore, uh, by advocating for the integration of technology into government procedures uh, and implementing measures such as tenure restriction and also two-tier voting system to safeguard the autonomy of board members, uh, it is possible to ensure that governance standards adapt to worldwide development and continue to be effective, uh, and, effective and efficient eh, in monitoring corporate administration. So this strategy uh, prioritizes are designed to foster a strong culture of governance that serve as a foundation for the continued expansion and also the, the stability of the organization. So this is actually the research objective uh, for this study. Uh, 
so the research objective for this study is empirically examine the effect of governance mechanisms on the firm performance. So when we talk about the specific this governance mechanism, like I mentioned earlier, this governance mechanism is actually referred to the this governance mechanism is actually referred to the specific uh, corporate governance pillar score. This one is actually referred to the governance pillar score. Pillar score. Okay, and this course is actually calculated by a Refinitiv Data Stream. Refinitiv Data Stream. And then in terms of measuring performance, okay, of course, we do have uh, several uh, factors okay that we can use in order to measure the firm performance but for this study okay i actually use return on asset okay so roa will become a specific benchmark in order to calculate uh, the firm performance so the research question is there any significant association between governance pillar score and also the firm performance after the post pandemic the hypothesis, there is a positive association between governance pillar score and also the firm performance. Uh, and in terms of methodology, uh, yes, the data is actually extract from the data stream, uh, cover year 2022 and also 2023. Uh, and it is actually cover 358 Malaysian listed companies where we actually extract the data from those company uh, that, that, that available. Okay, uh, in terms of uh, governance pillar score. So our benchmark is actually the governance pillar score. Okay, governance pillar score. Okay, uh, so based on year 2022 and also 2023, we found out that 358 uh, companies disclosed, okay, or appeared eh, to have that governance pillar score. So this is actually become our main sample for this for this study so in term uh, in term of analysis we use the econometric models to examine the relationship between uh, the governance score and, and also the return on asset so in term of results corporate governance pillar score show a significant positive effect on the firm performance okay so it proved that uh, the corporate governance actually affect the firm performance uh, this one, by taking into consideration several control variables to control this regression, we use a market capitalization, uh, leverage, uh, the company size. Uh, this one, all these to be adjusted to isolate the impact of, of governance. Okay. Uh, overall, the, the significance uh, of the studies. Uh, so, of course, it is actually contribute to the theory to enhance the, the understanding uh, of corporate governance mechanism impact on the firm on the firm performance <coughs> overall when we refer to the specific uh, Malaysian code on corporate governance uh, like I said we do have several revisions uh, since year 2001 okay until the latest one 2021 so overall like like in year 2001 we can see that it is more on to build up the 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 more specific standard for good, good corporate governance practices okay and also some of the modifications needed. So in year 2007, uh, revision provided more specific recommendation about the responsibilities and anticipated contribution of board members, okay? and also the audit committees. Uh, it is also highlighted that the importance uh, of board having a diverse range of talents and experience to, to efficiently supervise management and business strategy. Uh, so in year 2012, MCCG, we can see that it is actually aimed to promote director accountability by reinforcing their roles and responsibility and implementing the annual re-election of directors. Uh, in year 2007, 2017, eh, we can see the revision is actually emphasized an outcome-based approach and urge corporation to go beyond basic compliance to activities that truly improve the corporate governance. So the update itself introduced uh, new strategies to enhance board diversity, specifically focusing on gender diversity. It is also presented the comprehend, apply and report framework, urging the companies to customize their corporate governance practices to their uh, unique situation uh, while ensuring transparency regarding their practices and reason for 
uh, deviating from the MCCG guideline. And the recent one, you can see that in year uh, 2021, the revision is actually highlight the sustainability and also the incorporation of uh, environmental and social governance, which is ESG, that concern into the company strategy. So the standard have been revised to the limit uh, the tenure of independent directors to nine years in order to promote independence and introduce new viewpoint to the board, to the boardroom. Okay. Uh, so this is also will give a, a, a practical implication uh, uh, where it provide insight for policy policy makers uh, and also business leaders on on improving the governance the governance practices. So as a conclusion, uh, it is actually reinforced the importance of strong corporate governance framework. Uh, for full performance in unstable economic period um, and in terms of recommendation for future research. Okay? Uh, so overall, we can see that first for in terms of conclusion. Uh, since uh, this study is actually used a specific uh, secondary data in year 2022 and also 2023. Okay? Uh, so we can see that from the results overall, there is a significant association between the governance pillar score and also the firm performance after after pandemic. So this is proof that uh, all these things, okay, the, the, the presence of the post-pandemic COVID-19 in 2022 and 2023 uh, appear to significantly affect the effective corporate governance and the firm performance among Malaysian listed, listed firm. Okay? Uh, as a future recommendation uh, for future research and policy uh, adjustment, so maybe we can take into consideration the whole, uh, all companies listed in Brusa Malaysia, okay, uh, but Towards the end, it also depends on the on the availability of data, especially if we want to use a specific score uh, system uh, generated or calculated by uh, Refinitiv data stream. Okay, so overall, this is uh, what I have for my presentation uh, under this topic. Thank you.